Good morning everybody. Welcome to another Nightmare Tutorials and today we'll be doing obstructed labor. I recommend you open your 10 teachers as a good reference for this particular topic. It makes the explanation quite simple to understand. So, I always like to think of the process of labor involving three P's. P for like problem, which is the passage. Which is the female pelvis, the passenger, which is the fetus, and the par, the par, which is the uterine contraction. So in obstructed labor, the power is good. Power is fine. But the problem now is with the passenger passing through the passage. Could that be because the passenger is too big? Or because the passage is too small? So from there, you can start thinking of causes of when the passenger might be too big or causes of when the passage might be too small. Okay, so when there is no longer descent of the presenting parts in spite of good uterine contractions. So the woman is having about 3 to 5 contractions every 10 minutes, each contraction lasting about 40 to 50 seconds. Fantastic! But yet, the presenting part is still at least station 0. Then you know it's an obstructed labor. So causes, like I said before, there's disparity between the passenger, which is the bed canal, and the passenger, the fetus. It could be due to contracted pelvis, fetal macrosomia, malformations such as hydrocephaly, fetal ascites, co-joint twins. Malpresentation brow, presentation, mental posterior presentation, malposition, occipital posterior position, pelvic tumors such as fibroids, ovarian So the pathophysiology, the contractions are there, but the child is not going down. So in from a gravid woman, it gives hypotonic inertia, meaning that the uterine muscles tire easily. So there's no much risk of rupture of multiparasome in this hypertonically contracted uterus and high risk of rupture. So the lower segment becomes overstretched, becomes thin and distended to the presenting part of the fetus, while the upper segment thickens, giving a bandles ring formation. I advise you to go to Google to reference this bandle string. So what happens is that there's excessive molding of the fetus. Now, the fetal fontanelles, the fetal sutures, skull sutures are not completely fused, which is what refers to as molding. So the two skull bones begin to overlap each other. Then it can be fetal anoxia because with each contraction, there is this blood supply to the fetus. When the contraction is prolonged, and there is risk of intracerebral hemorrhage, usually intraventricular hemorrhage. Remember, fetus, the germinal matrix of the ventricles is not that strong, so there is increased risk of intraventricular hemorrhage. And it can lead to the prolonged contraction, and also the pressure on certain organs can lead to necrotic damage, particularly organs such as the urinary bladder. This is where women that have prolonged uterine contraction, certain of obstructed labor, the fetal head is impacted upon the bladder. So with the prolonged contraction, there's increased risk of necrotic damage. And if a diversion is not made for your rim, they can go on to develop a what? Fistula. So there can be nerve palsy from sciatica, nerve root compression, and then there will be exhaustion, dehydration, metabolic acidosis, particularly ketoacidosis, and sepsis and septic shock may also fall. The diagnosis. There's a distended bladder and bandles ring formation. And uterus is really hard and tender. Now, fetal parts may be difficult to palpate. Fetal hearts may be irregular and absent in the setting of what? Fetal hypoxia. When the general condition may be filled with matters vulva, the vagina may be hot and bruised. The cervix is almost fully dilated. There will be severe caput and molding. Severe caput and molding and then prolonged discharge coming out from the amniotic fluid. That is when the fetus is in severe distress. Okay, so investigation, your basic investigation, your analysis, a full blood gun to group and cross match blood. Ops and gynecology is a very, very bloody department. So, this group and cross match will be present in almost every investigation you do. And if we have it in our swap, plotting time, we use here. 
General measures, bladder drainage. Bladder drainage is really important. Especially in the prevention of what? The prevention of formation of vesicular general fissure because of the pressure necrosis. Stabilize circulation. Remember, they undergo dehydration and acidosis. You want to what? Ensure they have enough fluid. Correct the acidosis. If if it's that severe, and commence treatment for infection if there are signs of infection, tachycardia, fever, leukocytosis. Levation from the caesarean section, then the exploratory laparotomy for hysterectomy, repair, and PTL. As bilateral tube allegation, and we do repair only. But in that delivery, it's not possible unless the fetus is reduced and the pelvis is enlarged or the obstruction is what should move. So, clidotomy, the fetal cavicles can be removed, tapping free from the fetal abdomen can be done, craniotomy or decapitation. Well, these are all decapitation and bryotomies are destructive processes. So, you could do a same physiotomy when the pubic synthesis is surgically cut, you know, local anesthesia to allow the fetus to have more room. So, post op you to mobilize and apply elastic strappings from one AR crest to another. There's always risk of urethra or bladder damage, infection, chronic pelvic pain, and long term walking difficulty because you have destabilized the pelvis. Management of stress is you want to anticipate and prevent PPH. And I'm sure you know the ways of preventing PPH. So now, you should pause. So now you should pause and remember the management of the third stage of labor. Explore the uterus manually with caution to rule out rupture. Continue IV food and antibiotics. Continuous bladder drainage for 10 to 14 days, and repeat for 14 days, and repeat for 10 days. By creating a diversion, you reduce the risk of a fistula developing. If it's still better, you want to suppress lactation, then we would permit agonist. Treat nerve palsy and ensure hospital delivery in the nearest future to proper internet healthcare. Thank you very much.